Greetings everyone, a warm welcome. Hey, Happy New Year Leo. This is your reading for the first one for 2019. So walking into the January vibrations. If you guys listened to my December readings, I talked a lot about setting intentions back then. So hopefully you've been working on those to get yourself ready to put them into action for January because January is the activation time of those intention settings. So it's, a, it's hopefully been a really good journey for you. You've sort of established a few ideas or directions or thoughts or, you know, got some projects and contemplated them ready for putting them underway now as the new year rolls in. We will be using one card from this deck which will in reference be like an overall year energy card. So whatever card comes out is going to be an energetic frequency that runs through the year for you. And you can choose to come back and check on it again and revisit how you feel about it, whether you feel it's been activated or simmering away in the background. After we've done that we will be doing four cards from the Morgan Greer deck and then one fairy, uh, angel card at the end. Now before we move fully into the actual reading, I have done some intuitive work for you and came up with a mantra. You can use the mantra during uh, January or even further into the year if that's what you feel the energy is telling you to do. So you guys got this. It says, I see the best in everyone and help them bring out their most joyous qualities. And then it says, who do you need to help? And it questions, could you be a mentor or a healer? Or are there some healing relationships that need to take place? You also got the number nine, which is about endings and moving on. Uh, it said endings and letting go in grace. So when the number nine appears in our sort of psyche or our something like a reading, there is definitely something in the background saying there's a cyclical end or a process that is about to um, you know ebb away you'll have less flow and less energy from it so endings of course always create new beginnings and it's the new beginnings that we begin to focus on as we let stuff go that no longer suits us so with that in mind let's start your cards we'll do a couple of shuffles here for leo and because you got the number nine, we will take from the ninth card down. So just let me get your intention in here. This is for Leo for January 2019. And I actually think that's it. So... Oh, how nice for you guys, especially with that particular um, depiction that he has on the card. So it is, of course, power, which is the number eight, which is uh, the manifesting number. And of course, that is the strength card in the traditional tarot. And what do we have there staring at us? but a Leo the lion face. So I love synchronicity when it comes in like that. That that card being a major arcana, and given that this is going to run through the energy of the year for you, you know, what a wonderfully positive, powerful start and a, and a vibrational essence going on in the background. You know, even the colouring on the card, the way the orange in the background on my desktop is merging into the orange of the card that's kind of like merging then you get the merging of the um, perhaps sort of like an older wise man's face into the Leo the lion's face so we've got all this merging energy transmuting itself through I quite like to read the words from the book with Holland's devised words even though we know that the tarot has its own specific words or ideas, he has changed them around a little bit. So I will read to you because I think that's just as powerful as well. As a spiritual being, you have unlimited power at your command. This card represents inner strength, 
willpower, courage, compassion, generosity and love. At any moment these beautiful qualities can assist you in coping with an adverse condition in front of you or the many surrounding your lives, your life. Set aside the necessary time to resolve such issues. Power represents more than the physical external strength. It can also be channeled emotionally, mentally and spiritually. When you have balance over body, mind and soul and with the power of spirit, everything can be overcome to achieve a positive result. Power and strength can be developed to work in harmony in any given situation. Every obstacle, every error helps build your knowledge and understanding of the world around you. When you make a mistake, it's a chance for you to stop, listen and ask yourself, what am I supposed to be learning here and how can I make this situation better? Mistakes are great wake-up calls in that they provide you with opportunities to discover your weaknesses, what needs to be changed and which areas of your life need improving. Equally, they can be blessings in disguise. Just remember, you are power. So his words are a little more uh, determined and a little more from the side of you know, knowing that you have the ability to sort out any issues that may be around you. Whereas I sometimes think from the traditional tarot deck, I get the feeling of the card when I look at that, even though it does have the lion on it, of course, that the inner strength is a emerging for a person, that they are becoming stronger, whereas he more refers to the fact that you have the strength to deal with issues around you. So for some of you that could really relate, the, whether or not you have issues one way or another and they don't seem to have been being resolved or you have felt powerless or been depowered one way or another by other people perhaps or the situation just has not turned itself in favour or in direction that you are wanting to go in, then know that you have the power to work through it and learn from it. And I think that's really empowering when I go back to your mantra that you received because it says I see the best in everyone and help them bring out their most joyous qualities and it says who do you need to help and is there some sort of healing in relationships so whether or not that is referring to something that has perhaps been unbalanced and you haven't been treated fairly or evenly or, or things aren't on an even keel so yeah, there's many messages and dynamics that we could look into from this card. I personally, when I look at it myself, I feel an amazing strength coming from the card. And it sort of gives me this surge of physical strength, as well as I think, because they're looking at you through their eyes, the two different dynamics of the spiritual energy there they're looking directly into your eyes so I also do feel this empowering of spiritual enabling so wow yeah that's a big start there guys a wonderful message to start with and a wonderful one for you Leos as well so let's move it aside as much as it's so beautiful to look at we will put it aside and we will shuffle now from the tarot deck so this is for Leo, just getting your intentions into the cards for January for 2019. We will be taking from the top of this deck. Just a little more for Leo, January 2019. Your first card is the Queen of Swords, your second card, another one of my favourites in the deck, the Magician. Your third card is the Two of Pentacles, he is reversed, and your fourth card is the Page of Cups. So two court cards, a major arcana, Ooh, I'll wind that out a little bit so you can actually see it, and a Cups and a Pentacles. 
These cards don't necessarily have to refer to each week of the month, but they can. Some people will find that they are flowing in that way. I don't hold such tight uh, restrictions within the cards, so they could flow with, uh, throughout the entire reading. The Queen of Swords on the left, if she's going to represent a person in your life, it is often an air person sign uh, or someone who has that rising. It can be like a family member or a friend. They can be a woman or someone who exudes that feminine quality in life. Now this person could be around over this period of January. Perhaps they're coming to visit. Perhaps they have uh, a subject they want to talk to you about because the swords people are communicators and they often use intellectual communication so you might actually hear from this person through any form of communication it could be written a letter emails it might be someone you haven't heard from in a while and you suddenly go oh wow I'm back to connecting with this person again. Well, that's quite cool. There might be something that needs sorting out as well. Sometimes when she turns up, she can be known as the person who has a little bit of a harsh uh, few words that they want to say and they want to get it out and be heard. Now, if it's not a person who's around, this just could be a situation in the air. And again, it would kind of resemble that. There's something that wants to be said that needs to be done. Um, it can be about, sometimes it can uh, entail a legal matter of sorts or the signing of papers or contracts. So whether or not this is to do with a legal document through a lawyer or an accountant or a tax person, or whether you're even hearing information through someone like a doctor and you have to sign something or you've got to listen to a report or read a report. Those are all possibilities. Some of you might find that she she is, or whether it's a he or she, that this new energy could come into the scene and it could be representative of a new potential mate of some sort, like a romantic person or even possibly a business cohort of one sort or another, possibly a new employer or even a new employee that some of you may be taking on. I do tend to find that when the court cards turn up in a reading, because there are so many variables that, that, that it can go down, I think people get a little bit, you know, tired of listening to all the various options. So as a reader, you just rein it in a little bit and you say, well, here's some of the basic opportunities or energies that this card tends to represent so watch out for it or deal with it or up it or out it type thing you come to the magician he is number one this is the first reading for the year and the first month of the year he's giving you some sort of magical opportunity so again with this card you need to look around you you need to seek out what is it that's coming for me for some of you it could be a financial opportunity for some it could be a love opportunity and it could involve this type of person here because there's also love over here I might add so um, for some of you it could be a career opportunity or others it could be spiritual engagement whatever it happens to be you need to have your eyes open and be engaged and ready to pick up on the messages the magician delivers in a subtle way and he won't stop if you're not ready. He just goes on to the next dimension or the next person or the next opportunity for someone else. So when he's around, just engage yourself in the month, throughout the whole month, of this amazing potential new beginning for you um, and feel into it. Meditate with it and see which one it is likely to turn up to be because it really is lovely when the magician turns up. And I feel so many people can open like a portal to another world almost and, and a whole bunch of different possible changes of your future outcome. So we come to the two of pentacles reversed. The two, when he's upright, he often means the juggling of things. In reality, it holds a very similar message as when it's upright. It does talk about the need to juggle things, but to make sure, there's a sort of a catchphrase with it, because he's upside down, it's easier to drop it, right? To drop those juggling pentacles. So it's kind of giving you a warning about don't drop everything. Don't lose your load. Don't um, don't get into too much debt. Don't overspend. Don't forget to pay the bills. And this message has been out for another 
um, one of the signs as well but the two of pentacles was upright in that instance so I think with this one it even it feels like it's holding back if we were talking about job potentials or interviews as well because in its upright position I often feel there is the potential for a job application or an interview with the card but with this I'm feeling it's more stifled it's as if you might have thought you were going to get an interview or an offer and it disappears and you think well how what's going on here you know they contacted me or I felt really confident about it and it just seems to ebb away so that reverse two of pentacles is a bit of a, a tentative sign of saying stay alert be cautious get yourself back up the right way with your juggling of your funds in particular and of your money I don't know that it necessarily is saying there'll be a shortfall of money, but what it is saying is what you've got, be careful with it. So be prudent and, and form that budget and stick to it. Um, and just remember your first card that you got, the power card, and call on that inner strength and divine which way you need to go when making certain situations uh, or certain... Um, decisions especially when it comes to things around money or career or how you're investing or what you're wanting to buy or even who you loan I look at that and think to myself a little bit don't meet too many strangers and be getting into money things with them and be cautious if people are asking for money from you even street people like you know when you walk past someone on the street and they go give me a coin give me a coin I need it just be really careful around uh, situations like that especially if you're in a foreign city and you're walking around I don't know why that's come out but it has so anyhow let's move on to the page of cups with his beautiful his or her sort of ambiguous sexuality there um, feeling of love and calm and peace and gentleness and romance of course because it's in the emotional sector and the cup is out there with the tulips in this sort of initiation or proposition of friendship or love. Sometimes the page of cups and the pages generally do mean this, they are new offerings. So we talked about the fact that the number nine was here in the beginning for you suggesting endings and of course I said when there's an ending there is something new coming and the page is the newness. So this can be the initiation of love, it doesn't just have to be romantic love, it could be the love of a new friend, a new family member, a baby coming on the scene, a new pet that turns up. It could be something that you're just passionate about in life. So it could be the love of a new hobby or um, just something that enriches your heart and makes it feel like life is overflowing. And of course you can get that from the magician as well. So there's a couple of cards in here that are really boding, beautiful, warm, loving, new directional energies. And then there's a couple like the Queen of Swords possibly and the two of pentacles who are coming together a little bit more to amalgamate something that needs shifting around or making more firm or answering it and making sure that it's dealt with before you continue on out of January. So with that aside, you know, as I say, for everyone it'll be a little bit different. There's so many opportunities within each of the cards, but let's put them away for now and see what your last card is for the reading. From the angel deck this is a lovely deck it's a pretty old deck of cards now but they always have beautiful messages on them and again I'm going to take from the ninth card down so this is for Leo for January 2019 one more okay giving and receiving yeah well you've kind of had that message the whole way through we started off with the with the saying you know I see the best in everyone and help them bring out the most joyous qualities who do you need to help are you going to become a mentor or a healer 
So you've got the giving and receiving card, which really reaffirms what we talked about in the beginning. I will read the words to you. The entire universe operates in cycles similar to your inhalations and exhalations. When you only exhale, which is give, or only inhale, which is receive, you become out of rhythm with the universe. For optimal health, energy and replenishment, balance each inhalation in your life with an exhalation. So this is about, it's a very similar card in essence and meaning to the Six of Pentacles, which is all about the cycle of giving and receiving in life. And in fact, at the end of the year, in December, when I'm doing this reading, it's Christmas time for those of the people in the planet who, you know, relate to Christmas. But fundamentally, Christmas is about giving and receiving. And from your own perception, it's about giving and nourishing others and supporting them and sharing the love and feeling good about the act of giving. And of course, we don't just have to limit giving to that time of the year. We can give every single moment of the day. And we don't just have to give to people. We can give to ourselves. We can give love and care and support to ourselves. We can give to our pets. We can give to Mother Earth just energy and support and love. We can give to others. We can give to intellectual philosophies or spiritual beliefs. We can just continue giving. And of course, part of that cycle is receiving. But the fundamental principle of the nature of the universe, so kind of like how the universe works, is when you give, you will receive. So the more you just give, 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 the more in turn you receive, receive, receive. So it's not actually a difficult cycle to understand, but it has to start somewhere. And fundamentally, it's better to start with yourself from the giving end. You can be receiving and you can receive love from others and support and care and energy and money. You know, you can receive health from others like practitioners. But at some point, if that receiving is just coming in, it will build up and cause a blockage if it's not released back out again in the form of giving. So the truth of the nature is how cyclical it is. And to continue flow like anything in life, you're just as she said, inhalation, exhalation, in, out, giving, receiving. And when we do, you will find that the flow of life manifests at a beautifully powerful, which is that first card we come back to again, at a beautifully powerful level. And interestingly enough for you guys, I see so many animals in here. There's the kangaroo with its little baby, there's the parrot, um, there's the lion. So maybe there is something for some of you about animals in the month. Maybe some of you receive new pets one way or another. Maybe some are leaving, which is always a very hard thing. And maybe some of you are spending time with animals one way or another. Or maybe part of your learning journey is going to be spent around animal knowledge or behavior or experiences. So thank you for listening everyone. I wish you all a wonderful January and a happy, happy new year. Please like and sub the channel. It's really important to help it grow and keep it sort of um, producing well. I uh, love it when you leave your comments. I love reading them and I answer them whenever I can. Check your moon and rising sign as well because you'll be surprised to see what lovely messages are there too. Thanks again everyone. Have a wonderful, happy new year. Much love. Namaste.